Hi there, my name is Mats. It's nice to meet you. I'm the founder of Grunt, and in this video I'll teach you the basics of our Gaunt product. This is a great way to produce nice looking timelines without spending too much time on them. In the background you can see what we will be making in this video, and it should enable you to create basic timelines and adjust them accordingly. Let's just dive straight in. So I'll be creating a Gantt chart and I start by choosing Gantt from the Grunt ribbon. This lets me add my Gantt chart to my slide. A Gantt is an object which consists of a timeline, text columns such as the activity column, and a canvas where you can add all your graphics. Let's delete all the default graphics to clean up our canvas. You can delete objects from the right click menu. The first thing I like to do when I create a gun chart is to adjust my timeline. Click on the timeline to open the timeline floater menu. Step one is to adjust the date range and the project I have in mind has a duration of seven weeks. It will start on October the 3rd and end on November the 20th. Step two is to decide what my timeline will include. This menu lets me choose which date parts to include. In my case, I want to show both months, weeks, and days. Step three is to choose how my timeline will look. Expanding the advanced section allows me to toggle shading for the different periods on or off, or display separator lines between the periods. In my case, I want shading on my weeks and separators between months and days. Finally, rather than showing seven days a week, I'll turn off the weekends by pressing this button, so I only see five days a week. If you prefer something else than the default, you can select the days and change how to display them from the drop-down menu. Let me switch that over to show you the first letter of each day. I can do the same for months, since I want to display the full name of the months. Now it's time to add some content. You can type in an activity name in the activity column. If your text is quite long, the column will auto adjust to fit everything. You can also drag the column if you want it to be wider or narrower. Double clicking the control point will reset it back to auto behavior. In this case, rather than having my activities displayed to the left, I want to display my labels inline in my gun chart. I think it gives a slightly cleaner look. I can control my text columns from the main object floater, and you can access that menu by clicking on the edge of the object. From the floater menu, I can enable or disable the different columns, so I'll hide the activity column and if I wanted, I could also have added a responsible column or a comment column. I'll leave both of them off for now though. To make my text more legible, I'll slightly increase the default font size from the main floater. And now, let's add our timeline. My objective here is to showcase the required steps to execute a survey among clients. I have a deadline that I need to hit, so the first thing I'll do is to add a milestone over here. I can add elements to my timeline by left clicking and choosing the appropriate element from the menu. This is going to be named presentation and handoff, and I want it to be bold. Since this is a global milestone, I want to display it beneath my gun chart rather than in a specific swim lane. To move it, I can simply grab the milestone and drag it down to the bottom of the chart. This will turn the global lane on. If I select the milestone, I can also choose to display a line across my chart, and I can change the color to a green shade. I think I also want a different shape for this milestone, and I can choose that from this dropdown. Okay, let's start to create some processes. When I insert a process through left-clicking on my chart, it gets a default duration. To change this duration, I can drag either at the start or the end of the process, 
and you'll see a tooltip that makes it easy to get this right. You can also click on a process and drag it to a new location. This will keep the duration intact, but change the start and end points of your process. If you want even more control, you can double click on the process to open up a date picker. This will let you choose the specific start and end dates from a calendar. Finally, and probably my preferred method, is to click and drag in an empty area of the chart to insert a process directly. This makes it really fast to insert multiple processes at once. If you want to label these processes, you can select one and start to type directly. Let's call the first one onboard team. And I'll call the second one align scope. Now we can create more processes in new lanes as well. We will need um, create a survey process. And then we have to set our survey up using our tools. Um, so I'll type setup survey solution. Yeah, something like that. And then we know that we need to send out the survey and I want to send out the survey around here. So I'll create a milestone down at a global lane and call it send out survey. And actually, this has to be sent out by the end of Wednesday here, which means that I probably have to complete setting up the survey before that. So I'll drag that back. Then we need to run the survey and I want it to run for two weeks. I'll type the label. Then I'll add another milestone here where we can say that we should close survey and I'll move it slightly over. The final step is to analyze our results and we're probably going to spend a few days on that. And I want to prepare my final presentation as well, so I need another row. If I hover at the leftmost side of the gun chart, you can see this plus icon that appears. Clicking that will insert a new swim line, and I can then add my final activity over here. Okay, so I have my timeline set up, and I can start to make it look nice. I will adjust my colors to emphasize where there is a lot of work. When you select a process, you can change its color from the float menu. I'll do the same for this one as well. A slightly more efficient way is to select multiple shapes at once and then change the color. You can hold control on your keyboard while you select the processes, and you can then change the color of all of them at once. So these can be dark green, and the final two processes should have a blue shade. Looking back at the entire Gantt chart here, I think that perhaps the separators is a tad too much. So I can go back to my timeline menu and remove the separator for the days. It just makes the entire chart look cleaner, in my opinion, and I hope you agree. I also hope that you have enjoyed this exercise, and to learn more, please check out the rest of our videos. I'll see you next time.